Hey everybody, it's Rob here. The Lightning Spear Sorcerer is the most popular build of all the season and there is a lot of people that have a lot of questions about the build and I wanted to make this video and answer like the most frequently asked question of my stream and my YouTube as I saw in the comments here. And uh, we're just gonna get into it and talk about all the details. I also have a sheet that I'm gonna link here where all the written answers are. And we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff, like how to spam Lightning Spear, what the nerf means, uh, which gear choices we do, and just a lot of things here, basically. So uh, let's get started with the guide. I hope you find this helpful. So the first thing that I get asked a lot is how can I auto-spam my Lightning Spear, right? Because like you just hold it down and your Lightning Spear basically, like, basically keeps activating. And there's a set, and you can get up to, you see here, uh, 60 uh, Conjuration Stacks. And what you can do, is you go under options, you go under accessibility in the game. It's literally a setting that lets you autocast this. And then you hover, you go all the way down to controls and you need to turn this to hold all. It's the skill toggle behavior. Hold all, repeating your channel skills requires holding the skill input. So all you need to do is hold down W, like hold down whatever key you have the lighting on and that's it. Like I'm not pressing any other button it's only the W key in my case here. And you see here like the, the spear just cast automatically on cooldown. It basically cast it frame perfect, allowing you to get way more stacks rather than in comparison to me just doing this. You know, like if you do this, like you're gonna have less stacks because it doesn't cast it like frame perfect. You see like 50, I can't get to 60 that easily. So uh, you need to just hold down the button. This is gonna give you the most bang for your buck. It's very easy to remember, just hold. And that's pretty much it. And then you can get to, you know, like 60 with the um, attack speed breakpoint that we're gonna talk about here as well. But then just even before people get started with the build, so this is not a beginner friendly build in the very start. Um, this is the strongest build of the season, but you do need a Fractured Winter Glass here to play this build. I've given away, they drop from Zier, so Fractured Winter Glass like the minimum requirement. And what helps you a lot is a Shako as well, but we'll talk about alternatives to Shako. This is not a leveling build. If you want to level, there's a link here to the Firewall Sorcerer instead. Next question I'm getting a lot is how bad is the Sorg nerf? I already made a separate video that I'm also going to link in the description, but TLDR, if you don't even know what it is or what changed, um, it doesn't affect you because it only affects the very, very high pit pushes. And in normal gameplay, if you're doing hordes, if you're doing nightmare dungeons, if you're doing bosses, you will not notice any change. It got a little bit of a nerf on the high end, but for like, you know, most players out there, it'll be exactly the same. And is still, even with a minor nerf, the strongest build of the season by a mile. And next we have, what if I don't have a Shako? So I made a planner here. You can follow them all along in the description as well. We have many different setups. So there is a no Uber version and I did some improvements to this. So what I think if you don't have a Shako, you just play Ever Living. This one gives you damage reduction. And what you need is mana per second here because you will not be able to spam your lightning like I did. I'll show you and go into all the details how that's possible. If you don't have Shako, mana per second, cooldown reduction. And I also recommend you um, to play with an offhand and a one-hander here. I think this is gonna be a sword because it's gonna give you crit. So you just have a sword and an offhand and you basically get more cooldown reduction that you you'd normally get from your Harlequin's Crest, but you can't get it without Shako. So that's why I recommend one-hander plus uh, two-hander. But in the end, if you have Shako, guys, you wanna play a two-hander because all your damage is coming from splintering energy. Lightning Spear itself is not dealing any damage that's also the reason why we don't max it. All you need is one point in Lightning Spear. Because again, all damage is coming from crits and the splintering energy. This is also why crits are so important. Another thing I get asked a lot in terms of skills is why do you not use charge balls on your bar when you have points in it? So we take points in charge balls because it reduces the damage by 25% and it automatically procs with your unstable currents, which you have up permanently we'll get into like how we have it up permanently in a in a few minutes here but you basically have it up permanently and it gives you a 25 percent damage reduction because it just keeps triggering and you see here like the uptime is just ridiculous because we get so much cooldown back and uh yeah it's just like basically instantly ready again and uh you will see the it's very hard to see because there's so many conjurations spoken but you will basically get the um the orbs flying there we'll go down the list here 
And then next, the hold key, we already talked about that. Next question, why do I not run out of mana? And uh, the biggest and best answer I can give you is this passive here, Conjuration Mastery. The more conjurations you have in the air, not only do you do X multiplicative more damage, you also get multiple, you also get movement speed, which will uh, be very important for the Esu later, because it basically caps out this movement speed, uh, caps out your Esu, so you don't need to evade. I'm going to talk about that in a few more details in a bit as well, but because you can see here, my movement speed is just 200%. No matter what I do, because we get so many stacks from the Conjuration Mastery. And the Esu just uh, caps it out here at uh, basically uh, full uh, crit chance uh, capabilities. You see it here. Okay. But for the mana part, you're also getting 26x mana regeneration. If you have high Conjuration Mastery on your Fractured Winter Glass and also put three points in it, you will never have any mana problems. And you will also get basically a bunch of mana that you don't spend because lightning spear itself like once you reach this point where you can spam your lightning spear like this uh, you will not need any mana at all because your frozen orbs will just cast automatically um, from your fractured winter glass and if you don't you can play fist of fate that gives you more lucky hit to trigger the secondary effect here of the fractured winter glass where you are getting um, lucky hit conjuration spawns, which are frozen orbs, basically. And uh, if you use mana, you see, um, you can cast your frozen orb, especially on single target, I do this. You can aim where the frozen orb lands, like by your cursor, right? So wherever your cursor have, that's where your frozen orb will land. So if you're fighting a single target, let's go single target here. So we just make sure it's like a one target. So at the beginning, if you start your spears, if you start your spears, uh, you see you have cooldown and then you can keep casting frozen orb until you basically are able to spam it so i only like you see my mana goes down a bit but it goes up very fast because of the conjuration stacks right and you see here even on a single target we will basically and this is like one boss we will basically be able to still keep a lot of conjurations out and at some point you are have enough you have enough conjurations in the air that you can just spam and now i don't need to proc any more frozen orbs because they will just trigger automatically I don't have to do anything to trigger them because the Fractured Winter Glass and my Lucky Hit Chance is going to do that. We'll talk about the um, breakpoints you need to reach to still get like about 40, 50 Conjuration stacks on a single target guy here. And you guys can see like we can just hold the Lightning Spear and it just works. So yeah, again, you're not spending too much mana. And if you don't have a Shako, again, go with mana per second on your helm because uh, if you don't have Shako you will not be able to spam your lightning spear like this. You see I have 5.11 second. Um, the maximum you can reach because there is a cooldown cap in the game of 75%. So you're already getting 54 from here and then you're getting cooldown from here and from here or from your Tarasha depending on uh, which ring you play. And 5 seconds is the max. However, I think it's cool if your uh, lightning spear says like 5.11 I think if I take back Tarasha, it's 5.1 and it's it's all very similar. And I will talk about when to play Tarasha, when to play Fist of Faith here in a second as well. But step by step. So again, you don't run out of mana if you have uh, sufficient stats. Also, what's really important is to have a high cooldown reduction on your amulet here to not run out of mana for more Conjuration stacks. More on that in a second as well. Um, so yeah, we also covered how much you recover Frozen Orbs, basically, only at the very beginning of a fight, like you cast your Lightning Spear, then you cast Frozen Orbs, and then until you can basically spam your Lightning Spear. Because here, you see, if I keep spamming it, I also run out of mana. But as soon as you cast more Lightning Spears, I can basically, like right now I'm spamming Frozen Orb, and uh, you see my mana is, is still keeping up pretty well. Um, then we have two options as well for the enchantment. So on the enchantment slot, Again, planners in the description, you always want to take Firebolt. This is always in because it makes the enemies burn and gives us so many effects. The second uh, enchantment slot, you can see people running Ice Blades and you can also see people running Frozen Orb. I personally prefer the Ice Blades because they also reduce the cooldown of Unstable Currents, especially if you don't play with Orange Herald but you play with Tybert's Will. Um, you see like whenever I um, have the Ice Blades here and this was all with Ice Blades. So we can just hold down W again, cast a couple of frozen orbs, this is how we always start the boss fight. 
and um, you'll see how crazy fast the cooldown of my unstable currents would reset right now. Right, and we are getting like very comfortable uh, to like 45, 50 stacks on a single target, and we can spam our lightning spear. So if we now would take Tybert's will and we would take Frozen Orb itself, I think with the pants it might be somewhat, or it's gonna be somewhat fine, but like this, see, we're not gonna get so much unstable current resets. We still, we're gonna get way more Frozen Orb. So our Lightning Spear is still fine, but our unstable currents is lacking right now. And if you're taking back in the Orange Herald, you're gonna notice, like, you're gonna be somewhat fine. However, I think the um, Ice Blades are still a better choice, because it's like kind of tough already with really good cooldown. And it's gonna get really only harder if you have worse gear, um, where your unstable currents might not be up in time. So that's why I prefer the Ice Blades. For DPS and Lightning Spear, Frozen Orb Enchantment might be fine, but I like Ice Blades. We just have an easier time with the unstable currents, and this is what I recommend. All right, then we have gear. So there is a lot of people that have a lot of questions about the Winter Glass. So Winter Glass that priority. There are a lot of Winter Glasses in the game with uh, a lot of important stats. So um, I think what is the most important, especially if you are a beginner, a beginning player, is the cooldown reduction from Conjuration when casting Frozen Orb Explosions. So this Greater Affix here, I think, is the number one stat. If you have like a 0.1 here, this is not really what you want. You want a minimum 0.2, you better have a point three, and um, ideally, obviously, you have a greater affix. And for single target, the best way is also to masterwork those uh, conjuration cooldowns. This is the number one um, priority. Number two priority would be conjuration mastery. If you want to do infernal hordes, conjuration mastery is the best by far because you basically almost never fight a single target. The only thing where you need more conjuration cooldown really is on a single target which we are doing right now, that's why I'm wearing this amulet. And also, if you want to push high pits, you need to masterwork the Conjuration cooldown. But for overall farming, I like this one, um, because it's completely fine when you're fighting multiple enemies and you just get a bunch more damage to, like, this. It's basically 99% of the game, you're not fighting a single target, you're fighting, like, multiple targets. And with that, the Conjuration mastery, it just goes completely crazy. And you guys can see here, uh, we have no problem with our cooldown at all, and we still like get over 50, 60 stacks just with this. But if you want to go full ham, the cooldown is the best. So again, cooldown over Conjuration Mastery, but these are the second best. The third best option is the secondary. And the secondary um, needs to be high because your Conjurations have a up to 90% chance to launch Frozen Orbs. So you get more Frozen Orbs, hence you get more cooldown resets. It's like a, you know, a snowball effect. It's like triggering into it itself and it just makes it so much stronger. So um, keep in mind, the secondary is also really important, but I would never uh, take uh, one like this here where it has a high secondary, but it has only 0.1 because it's like a snowball effect feeding into the 0.1. But if the 0.1 is already so bad, it's not worth it. So you will always, you know, even though this has 65, you would always choose this amulet over this amulet, just because it has more Conjuration cooldown. So again, stat priority, Conjuration cooldown, then Conjuration mastery, then the secondary. Uh, the other two effects are not really too important. You might need some non-physical damage if you have, if you are playing no Tarasha ring. And the chance to cast Frozen Orb projectiles twice is also pretty decent, um, just to get more uh, Frozen Orb explosions, even on top of this, in combination with your um, Frozen Orbit ring. So it's gonna be, uh, you need a good winter glass pretty much uh, to play the build to its fullest. And uh, there is certainly a lot of farming involved. I personally have uh, farmed this uh, Zir guy for like five days and we have gathered and given away a lot of these amulets and we will uh, continue to do so uh, because we have like quite a lot of spare ones as well. But yeah, winter glass, very important. And this is basically a requirement to play this build. Um, why do we not play Starless Sky? So first of all, Starless Sky does not have any cooldown reduction whatsoever. The only thing it does, it gives you damage. Like we already established that you basically don't need to use mana once you have good gear. And uh, if you have a Starless Sky, you should probably salvage that Starless Sky and craft a Shako instead. Uh, because again, Lightning Spear itself does not cost any mana. And uh, at damage peaks, 
we will not even we will not even be able to trigger starter sky let's say i would equip it there's some decent stats but let's say i would equip it like you see i would not even proc it i would have to go out of my way to spam frozen orb you know every couple seconds to even uh, keep starter sky up so it would be a basically a dps loss uh, in the end and you'd also lose an aspect so starter sky uh, not needed for this build if you have one again you should salvage it and get a shuckle if you only care about this build then we have fist of fate versus storm swell so these are all the gearing options that you can do so um you guys can see here there is this fist of fate and unfortunately the secondary does not work for your splintering which is basically giving you all the damage however fist of fate still has very high lucky hit which will make it very casual friendly and beginner friendly to trigger your conjuration cooldowns with fist of fate you're gonna get all this lucky hit, it's also gonna help you to trigger the boss. So if you're starting out this build, Fist of Fate is a very, very good choice because it makes the gameplay so much easier, especially it makes it more forgiven, uh, forgiving if you have like a, you know, not such a great role on the secondary of your emulator. For example, if I were to play uh, this Fractured Winterglass here, I would probably choose Fist of Fate. It's a pretty decent one, um, but it doesn't have as high secondary. And to make up for this, again, it only works on lucky hit, I can get up to a hundred percent chance to trigger this 66 percent chance and um, that's when i would uh, choose to play fist of fate but in the end storm swell is just insane because there's also some bugs to it so um the way that it seems to work is it does 30 percent damage against vulnerable enemies with a barrier it does 30 percent damage when ice armor is active giving you that barrier and it does 30 percent damage against frozen enemies so it basically gives you a total of 90% damage. It's like the um, retaliation aspect that the rogue is double dipping with. This one, which also gives you 30% X against stunned and also another 30% X against knockdown enemies. So yeah, guys, Storm Swell is pretty insane. And um, in the uh, end game push setups, like you're definitely playing this one uh, with Storm Swell. However, for most people, if you're just killing bosses and stuff, Fist of Fate is gonna still be a good option because it's gonna make it so easy uh, to uh, spam your Frozen Orbs and to not run out of mana and not run out of Lightning Spears on single target. I personally played this for a long time myself before I got even some new gloves. So Fist of Fate is still a perfectly fine item. But in the end game, if you want to maximize for DPS, Storm Swell with Lightning Spear and Crit Crit is pretty insane. And right now, I also needed to reach my attack speed breakpoint uh, which brings us to the next next topic because my fist of fate does not have enough attack speed then we uh, we're going to talk about attack speed in a little bit we have tarasha versus shredding blades this also turns into the attack speed uh, calculation again because tarasha itself is a very very good ring it gives you very good damage it gives you cooldown which is insane for lightning spear but the cooldown can kind of be made up for by having lightning spear cooldown on a normal aspect ring you see, like, this one gives me 20% uh, and this one also gives me 20% cooldown. And really, the only thing that matters is your Lightning Spear and how you can spam it. Um, what Tarasha does give you is the non-physical damage, so you have a very easy time uh, to maxing out your Frigid Fate here. You see, without Tarasha, I only have 57 out of 60, and this is a multiplier. Um, with Tarasha, it's going to be very easy. It also has Lucky Hit, which is very nice, and again, a big multiplier on secondary. However... If you want to reach the final attack speed breakpoint, you need to play with a normal ring because you need to reach 89.3% attack speed. Let's actually talk about this now because else it's going to be confusing. Um, so this is basically a attack speed calculation and the way it works in any game that is running on any kind of frames, you always have breakpoints for attack speed. We had this in Diablo 2, we had this in Diablo 3, we also have this in Diablo 4, but there's not as much knowledge about breakpoints out there yet but basically you can only cast your your skill every so and so many frames and so since the game is running at a certain frame rate there's always going to be breakpoints between the frames how fast your attack is performed so for the lightning spear the breakpoint that you want to reach is uh, 89.3 this is only affecting you if you already have you know, no cooldown on your Lightning Spear. If you have cooldown on your Lightning Spear, you are capped by your cooldown, not by your attack speed. You know, because Lightning Spear basically becomes a core skill if you have enough cooldown that you can just spam it, right? 
and you see you spam it and you get all these all these crazy stacks but yeah if you are not at this stage this cooldown or this attack speed breakpoints they don't apply to you because you are capped by your cooldown but if you aren't capped by your cooldown then if you have like a greater affix shako then you can go for this attack speed breakpoint and then you need, you can't play Tarasha because it doesn't give you attack speed. And you need to play an attack speed ring. And uh, the way the attack speed is calculated here, I have attack speed calculation here. So we have Paragon board in the advanced setups on the Paragon board. Again, this probably doesn't matter to you because you are still cool on kept. But I just quickly want to go over it because many people ask me. So there's this um, Swift Conjurer and all these attack speed nodes. They give you... 8.9 attack speed, you have Elixir of Advantage. It's this one here, Elixir of Advantage. We drink it, we get 15% attack speed, also Lucky It, which is very helpful to trigger more conjurations. We have Unstable Currents. It's this one here, gives us another 25% attack speed. You see on the first bullet point, another 25. Um, then we have the Gloves. If you have Fist of Fate, it's this. If you have a normal Glove, you can have a Greater Affix, that's fine. Um, you have a ring, you need at least one greater affix with attack speed on either one of the rings or on gloves to reach it. And then you have the other ring also like Masterwork, it has 13.1, you see. 13.1, uh, 13.1 in theory. And then here I have a greater affix with 17 on my gloves, so I don't need it on the ring. And in total this gives me 91% uh, attack speed. What you basically need unbuffed is 50% attack speed and you'll be fine. Like I have the elixir here, so I will already have 65. You see here, my attack speed bonus is 66. So I have like 1.5 overkill. And if I cast my unstable currents, you see I have 91. So I'm like 2% attack speed over the cap right now. And I have the last breakpoint. And this basically is what allows me, again, to reach these uh, high conjuration stacks. So you cannot reach... Uh, well above uh, 50 conjuration stacks without this and it still takes a bit rng there's also some lag involved like i don't always uh, get this it depends like on the server that i am on like you see here we have 50 54 and it should keep going up but yeah, you see like you also need to um cast your unstable current sometimes see now 57 and it goes up all the way to 60 you can even reach 64 if you have a triple crit amulet but yeah it's uh it's not that easy and it also somewhat works on a single target if you have a triple crit on the cooldown of, of your fear minute so these are the attack speed breakpoints again only relevant to you if you already have a perma lightning spear uptime which you basically need a lot of cooldown for okay then we have uh, tarasha for the shredding blades again this is basically like tarasha is great but you need attack speed uh, for the uh, single target and high pit push setups um, how do we keep up Tywood's Will? So in the normal setups, when we play Tywood's Will, like if you're not pit pushing, you're just doing anything else, you just uh, need to teleport uh, every every five seconds to keep up the unstoppable buff. And you see it's going to be up for five seconds after using teleport as well. So you can just use teleport. Sometimes you have your flame shield up as well, giving you unstoppable. Just make sure that every five seconds you either cast your teleport or your um, flame shield to uh, just have the permanent uh, 1.2x of Tywood's Will. It also helps you out a lot on single target. Uh, if you're running out of... If you're running out of mana, let me just demonstrate this. I'm just spamming Frozen Orb, and you can just cast Teleport, and it gives you 50 mana back, right? So it can be very useful in, in these scenarios where you just have no more mana. But yeah, you see, like... Once you have the right gear, you will be able to sustain here 40 stacks, even on a single target. So I'm not doing anything but holding down W. And I'm not spending any mana, either. So this is going to deal a lot of damage if this was like a single target guy, basically, already. But yeah, Tywood's Will is, is pretty cool for that. Especially, uh, I recommend this during the boss killing setup. If you want to kill the uber bosses, I have a setup for you. It's this one. Using Fist of Fate here, because uh, we don't... Have. We don't need to have the breakpoint because we can't cast it that crazy anyways. And um, this just has like all the damage and has a lot of cooldown reduction. And has a lot of like resources that you can get here on a single target. Like it's basically the boss killer setup that I use to kill uh, like Uberzir and Uber Duriel and stuff with. We can talk about the planners like a little bit uh, after. Um, then I also have, if I only can craft which Uber unique, which one would it be? 
you always want to craft a shuckle. This is like the only uber unique that you need for this build. And you can get another Resplendent Spark from Lilith, you can get one from the Season Journey, and then you salvage that Starless Sky we talked about, or you, you need to get two more Ubers, you can salvage them and you can craft a Shackle. I think um, with the way that they buff the um, drop chance of the Uber Uniques, it's very possible for almost everybody to get an Uber Unique this season. Um, you get so many of the boss materials from the Journey, and if you're grouping up with uh, some friends or with some people from the community, uh, if you don't have any, then... Um, It'll just gonna be very comfortable, but yeah, there is definitely a big advantage of doing it in a group. Maybe this will be addressed in the in the future, but right now, uh, if you're looking for Uber Uniques, do it in a group, and you will have a, a good time getting it. Um, so next one here is white topazes over ruby. Obviously, if you're struggling to survive, uh, you can use rubies, but topazes basically give you DPS, and this build. And in ARPGs in general, obviously, if you're playing hardcore, you 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 use rubies, but in ARPGs in general especially in softcore mode, it's all about how much damage you do. If you kill the monster before it can even attack you, you can't die. And um, you always go full DPS, at least if you want to min-max and play efficient in the endgame. On softcore, there's no reason to stack toughness more than you need to, right? Like Because if you do a, a run and you never take damage or your life never drops below 50, you are basically losing opportunity cost in terms of damage. Like, you know, you just need enough toughness to survive. You don't need any more because any more toughness is wasted because the opportunity cost is you lose damage. So if you can get more damage and sacrifice toughness, you would always do this to a certain degree if you're playing softcore. So we always go topaz, always go DPS. And this is also the reason why in most of the setups, also in the pish, pit push setup, we are playing Raymond. However, if you do have a Tyrell Smite and uh, you want to do T8, like Infernal Hordes, like you can get one shot there very easy. I recommend you play with Tyrell Smite. But if you're doing like Uber boss killing, you know, any sort of like where your DPS matters, you go for Raiment of the Infinite as well because it gives you all these ranks to Glass Cannon, which basically make you squishy, but also make you deal 54x. This is basically 50% more damage, 54% more damage straight. And I didn't even triple crit it yet. So always for big DPS, and then this is like here, you see in the boss setups, you always go Raymond. Uh, but if you're doing like the normal setup, uh, this is like a standard setup for everything, uh, you go with two rails might, because this is gonna be very easy, uh, T8s for you or T7, whatever you're farming. But again, killing bosses and also doing pits. You can try two rails too, but you will need, at the high end, you will need DPS. And at these bosses, it doesn't matter because you kill them before they can even build any stacks up to you. Even if you have mediocre gear, like the if you're doing Uber Duriel or Uber Zier, like they will they will die like crazy fast. So always go DPS if you're playing softcore. Um, then stats. How much crit chance do you need? So what is important to understand is Lightning Spear itself already gives you 15 crit chance. So you want 100% crit chance for your splintering energy because this is literally where all your DPS is coming from. It only works for critical hits. So you take 100. And then everybody can do this, minus 15, you need 85% crit chance. And then, depending on your ASU roll, minus 36, so mine's pretty shitty, but again, you, I, I'm capped already. So minus your ASU roll, if you have a perfect run, it's minus 40. And then you know you need 45 crit chance unbuffed. So let's unequip ASU, and then let's see. So I already have uh, 57, but again, I have a bad ASU. So with ASU up, my crit chance is 93, plus 15 is already overkill, right? And this is the reason, like, I already have, uh, obviously, like, I would redo this one here and get the roll to crit damage at some point. I have crit chance here, which is not useful for me right now. Uh, but I haven't redone all my rings. So you don't even need greater affixes. If you have no greater affixes, crit chance uh, on your rings, that's completely fine. You'll still be crit capped if you have, like, a 35 plus SU. And then what a lot of people always... Uh, say to me as well is that you need to evade rob why are you not evading with esu because you see here evade grants movement speed and movement speed caps out the esu right so you see here the current bonus is only 9.5 and here the current bonus would be capped but again they keep forgetting about conjuration mastery like conjuration mastery gives you all this movement speed already so you see if i just start casting my crit chance is already 93 and if i would now evade I would just lose uh, Conjuration's cast. Like, I would just 
like instead of um, casting lightning spear, I'm casting evade because it has a big animation and it makes you lose lightning spears. So you never, never, ever want to evade in any DPS scenario because, again, you don't need it at all because all the movement speed that is required to max out your Esu is coming from your Conjuration Mastery, man. 13% per stack, and we saw, we get 60 stacks, we get 60 times 13. We get 700% movement speed. Like <laughs> We can only have 200, and 100 is already the base, so... We have like way over cat movement speed. You do not have to use your evade at all. In fact, if you're doing it, you're scuffing yourself. You're losing a lot of DPS. Obviously, if you're fighting Lilith or something and you need to um, like literally use your evade to dodge something to not die, then yeah, by all means, use evade. But you never need to use evade um, to cap out your stuff. Uh, to cap out your asshole. Like you just uh, cast Conjuration and there you go. Okay, we talked about the tech speed breakpoints. Uh, and then requirements. This is probably one of the last points. Requirements for this uh, Giga setup here. So I didn't master work my amulet three times, but if you want to push pit, guys, it's very important to have GA on cooldown and also get a double, better a triple crit for 0.8 on the Fractured Winter Glass. And this is basically what allows you, next to uh, the cooldown breakpoints, uh, to, to spam your Conjuration on a single target. You guys can see here, um, once I, I get going, I'll basically have... Oh, I have the wrong I have the wrong pants. And you need these pants as well on a single target. You can't play targets well because else you don't have unstable current stacks. So you guys can see here, once I start, I start going, I will basically be able to uh, perma-spam my Lightning Spear on a single target here. And we are still getting 40 to 50 if you have the amulet um, maxed conjuration stacks here. And um, it's still going to deal a lot of damage to these, uh, to these uh, 45, uh, to these target dummies. And obviously also to the bosses. And you make sure it's one dummy and not two stacked on top of each other because there's a bug. You can easily make sure uh, of this with your flame shield. Basically like, I don't think I have all the numbers on, but you just press flame shield. And uh, as long as you see only one number pop up, you know it's only one target dummy. And uh, you need to reach this breakpoint. Again, I have this in the planner as well. So you want to reach the 89.3 attack speed breakpoint. Again, this is with Elixir of Advantage and Unstable Current. You want to reach 60% CDR on your Lightning Spear. That means it shows uh, 5 to 5.5 seconds, else it's not possible. And you need at least 0.7 or 0.8 on the amulet. Again, I know this is like very high gear requirements, but this is only if you have plans to get the Fell Maven 150 title. This is going to be a pretty comfortable build if you have good gear to do 150 with, but you will need these requirements to do 150. And a lot of people have already done it, um, but it is still not easy, guys, and remains a challenge. And for most of you, this is not really relevant, so just stick with the standard setup. Um, play this, Masterwork, Conjuration Mastery or Cooldown, whichever one you hit, whichever one you feel comfortable with, whatever you want to focus on. Again, Conjuration Mastery for Hordes and Conjuration Cooldown if you want to do single target or you want to do pit pushing. And um, that's pretty much the setups here, guys. So we have pit pushing. This is what I currently have, basically, with uh, Cooldown Reduction Masterwork. Uh, we have the Winter Glass, just boss DPS, basically, full damage. Um, we have the no uber version if you don't have a shako yet and we have the standard version and this is what i would recommend and we can actually write this t8 hordes it's gonna be very comfortable with this uh, to do the t8 hordes all the planners and also the fhq with all the answers and links to all the stuff is gonna be linked below i hope you enjoyed uh, the overview my friends and i hope i answered your question if you still have more questions i might do a part two uh, you can submit your questions in the comments. And uh, yeah, just hope it's helpful to you. Have a great season, my friends. Sorcerer is amazing. Best build of the season by a mile. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, maybe one of these days we actually generated quite a few images here. Um, the Barbarian is uh, going to come back as well. And we'll make some more Barbarian FHQs and videos. But Sox is amazing, my friends. Log in. Have a great time. GG. Enjoy. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.